what's going on everybody welcome back to another video a while ago i made a video basically based around a tool called ad explorer so if you don't if you haven't watched that one ad explorer is basically a tool that's used to view and edit objects within active directory as long as you have credentials you can go in there uh, if you have domain admin credentials you can actually edit from there save it and then it actually makes the changes on the domain controller but um it also had a snapshot feature option where you can take a snapshot of the environment or whatever is on AD and then you can open it up to view it for uh, offline use. Well, today I actually came across this neat tool where it takes that snapshot and instead of just using it again for AD Explorer to view for offline use, it converts that snapshot into Bloodhound compatible JSON files. So if you haven't seen the, um, the Kerber roasting video, that I made recently. We used Bloodhound and we saw how we used the Bloodhound Python and just a, and how it gave us those JSON files and all we had to do from those JSON files is actually drag them over into the Bloodhound GUI. So basically for that it'll be the same idea. We take that snapshot and then we throw it into this tool which will then give us those JSON files and then we put those into Bloodhound and be able to discover further attack vectors. So here we have the Git repository for the tool. I'll actually leave it in uh, a link below inside the description. So let's go ahead and check it out. AD Explorer snapshot. Uh, AD Explorer snapshot.py is an Active Directory Explorer snapshot parser. It is made as an ingester for Bloodhound and also supports full object dumping to NDJSON. AD Explorer allows you to connect to a DC and browse LDAP data. It can also create snapshots of the server you are currently attached to. This tool allows you to convert those snapshots to Bloodhound compatible JSON files or dump all available objects in the snapshot to ND JSON for easier parsing. What is supported in Bloodhound output mode, uh, user collection, group collection, computers collection, trust collection. Uh, so we can see it's similar to the Bloodhound um, Python adjustment that we used previously. Limitations. The ingester for Bloodhound only supports offline information collection from the snapshots file. Yep and won't interact with systems on the network. This means features like session and local admin collection are not available. GPO slash OU collection is missing, just like the uh, the Python ingester. The ingester processes all data it possibly can from the snapshot, including ACLs, but will only output the JSON data that can be interpreted by Bloodhound. You will only have the data available of the LDAP slash DC that you ran the snapshot against. All right, installation. So we get clone the repository, cd to the directory and then we run pip3 usage and right here we have an example of how to use it so python 3 we use the tool and then the location of the dat file so the dat file in this case would be the snapshot from ad explorer right, so here i am on my attack windows machine so what i'm going to do is actually open up ad explorer ad64 connect to so here you want to put the domain so ecorp.local is my domain um Actually, before I even do that, let me go over to here. So in order for me to even be able to do this, because this machine is not an AD joined machine, like it's on the same network as the domain controller, but it's not actually connected to Active Directory. So what I had to do was, and I, this might help someone else who's out there, go to view network connections. So this is if you're on the actual local area network and you're not on a domain joined machine. So you just go to here, you go to properties, and then you want to go to Internet Protocol version 4. And then you want to add the domain controller as your preferred DNS server. And that's it. So we do ecorp.local. Put in the user. So I'll use AMOS. Put in the password. And now we've connected. Now we want to create a snapshot. So let's go to File. Create Snapshot. And uh, use the defensive desktop. Okay, so let's save it to our desktop. Wait for that to finish, and it's done. So now what we want to do is get this file over onto our Kali machine, or Kali machine, however you prefer to say it. Since I'm on a VM, I could just easily do this. Just copy, go over to my Linux machine, and just paste it in there. Now that we have the .dat file from the snapshot, let's go ahead and install this tool here so let's just copy this get clone okay and now let's cd into there ad explorer 
and now pip3 pip3 install dash dash user done and wait for that to finish up all right so it finished now let's go ahead and do python 3 ad explorer and then just drag the dat file into there or just specify the full path hit enter and we could see that it finished output written to robot dc ecorp local star dot json so let's do ls and we can see all the json files here so for computers domains groups users basically it looks exactly the same as when we use the python ingester for the kerberos video all right now let's start up bloodhound so first we've got to start up the neo4j server so let's just do neo4j start and then bloodhound and now a quick tip for when there's data in here but you want to load a new batch of data what you want to do is go up into here and then go down here and click uh, clear database so that it wipes all the information that was in here already so you can start back over from scratch also quick note this would only work using bloodhound version 4.1 and up or version 3. now the reason that i'm saying this is because i was trying to do this demo earlier but whenever i tried to drag the .json files onto Bloodhound, it just wasn't loading at all. And I was wondering, like, what is going on? So after about 30 minutes or so, um, I found out it was because I was using the version uh, 4.0.3. Because at the time of this recording on the, uh, what's the date? 13th of February. Whenever you do an apt uh, install Bloodhound, it only installs version 4.0.3. And so that's the reason why it wasn't working because this only works with 4.1 and up or version 3. So actually, let me see if I could show you what was going on. So if I just type Bloodhound to start this up, what I just installed, version 4.0.3. If it's even going to open up. Okay, it does. Let me log in real quick. Neo 4J, put in the password, log in. And it's like, okay, cool, it's loaded up, um, nothing's in here. And then we go over to upload data, and we see the JSON files are here, so I was just like, trying to click these. And then it'll say upload complete, but it'll stay at 0%. So I was like, yo, what's going on? And then that's when I figured out, oh, okay, so because this is version 4.0.3, um, and the output of that JSON file is specifically made for Bloodhound version 4.1 and up, then... It's not going to be basically compatible with this specific version of Bloodhound. So that's why you need version 4.1 and up. So since I couldn't rely solely on the package manager through Kali, I actually had to go to the Bloodhound's repository for uh, 4.1 and download it from here. Directly from here. And then I started it up. Bloodhound no sandbox. And now here we are. Let's go ahead and upload those JSON files. So we got users you can see it goes to 100 isn't stuck at zero let's go to groups domains and computers all right clear to finish check here and we see the data has been updated let's refresh and there we go and now from here we can go ahead and start making our queries so let's go to analysis uh, we can go to find all domain admins so now here we have listed all the domain admins within the domain we can go to find principles with dc sync rights select the domain gives us a layout of all the users here that have dc sync rights and how it can be abused so let's say this user amos they have get changes onto ecorp.local so just like i stated before you can go to uh, if you right click the tag in the middle get help gives us some info the user amos at ecorp.local has the ds replication get changes privilege on the domain individually this edge does not grant the ability to perform an attack however in conjunction with ds replication get changes all a principal may perform a dc sync attack uh, shows us also how to abuse it 
with both get changes and get changes all privileges in bloodhound you may perform a dc sync attack to get the password hash of an arbitrary principal using mimi cats gives us a command here to run a mimi cats to be able to get the password hash of a administrative user using dc sync which i'll go into later in another video uh, you can also perform the more complicated extra sids attack to hop domain trust for information on these see the blog by harm joy uh, gives you some references and some offset considerations we can go ahead and click on objects get information on them object ids password last change descriptions click amos is one we can see in her description she has her password ice cream 10 hidden in there well it's not exactly hidden but it's in there um as rep roastable true and what we can also do is let's say want to know what the domain admins can do so we'll click domain admins group right here and then scroll down to outbound control rights and then transitive object control and then we can see everything that domain admins could do so for example they have generic all on these groups <laughs> all extended rights on this so this is basically all the objects so these are groups computers users and it'll basically give you a description of what permission it has on each object so we can see here it owns generic all remember you can right click do help to show whatever can be abused and this is the reason why bloodhound is one of the best enumeration tools when it comes to testing an active directory environment by being able to graph what is linked to what and the ability to aid testers and mapping out their attack surface Anywho, that's about it for this video on how you can use AD Explorer snapshots in combination with Bloodhound. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.